Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome students to the on online NPTEL course Visual Communication Design for Digital Media. In this uh, module, we will start discussing uh, visual communication design methodology. So, in this module, we will start with the generic design methodology which can be uh, applied throughout the different, uh, different uh, visual um, uh, new media paradigms. But uh, there are, uh, as there are different uh, media paradigms, for example, graphic design, packaging design, branding, visuals of web design and animation or game design. Uh, each and every design process has its unique uh, methodology which we will discuss in the uh, from the next uh, uh, module onwards uh, later. But here we are discussing a generic uh, design methodology which we follow uh, in today's time. So, uh, the uh, most uh, many of the uh, from the ma uh, many generic uh, methodology which we uh, we will discuss uh, in this uh, module uh, might be added uh, in some uh, design uh, platforms, some design uh, paradigms and in uh, might be um, uh, some other uh, process might be added and some process might uh, be omitted from this generic uh, design methodology. But uh, we will get a holistic uh, view of the methodology and we will start taking each and every uh, design field like graphic design, branding, uh, visual um, software, uh, games and animations and we will discuss the methodology later on in the detailed fashion. So, in generic uh, design methodology uh, mainly it is uh, based on web and uh, visual communication design of uh, graphics and uh, because animation and uh, game design is bit different uh, from the field we will discuss it later. So, a uh, generic design methodology which we uh, will mainly follow in web design and uh, graphic design and uh, also in branding. So, this uh, process initially there was a model which is uh, called waterfall model. Uh, so, there was a gradual progression of one step to the other step. So, first there will be data, um, uh, data gathering, then there will be a design um, ideation, then re design process and then the final production or uh, final design. So, that was the waterfall model. So, uh, in uh, when the one stage is complete, the next stage starts and from the next stage, the step one, the previous stage, uh, we cannot go back to the previous stage. So, there is a gradual linear progression in the waterfall model. So, this was actually a sequential model and uh, this was an old model, but now we do not believe in the waterfall model because of uh, many um, problems of waterfall model and it does not incorporate uh, feedback and does not incorporate the ch uh, provision of changing the product and making the product better, making the user interface better and making a visual communication better after taking a feedback from user and um, peer review. So, uh, the next a better model which evolved later after waterfall model is iterative model. So, there is a loop from concept generation to design development, we go back to the user, we test the talk, uh, talk to them and understand the, uh, the feedback, understand their uh, take their uh, feedback from ethnographic data collection, heuristic evaluation and then we again uh, analyze our product and uh, product or design and then we iterate the design or discard the design if the design is absolutely not uh, acceptable. Uh, then we uh, discard the design and start new um, and then again go back to the user and iterate and then the final design comes. But when the final design comes, it is a user proof uh, and user centric design. So, acceptability of the final design is much higher than the if uh, uh, we follow the water, uh, if we follow the iterative model rather than um, waterfall model. So, we discuss uh, waterfall model. So, waterfall model is first described by Herbert Bennington uh, at a symposium in um, of web design uh, software development. So, here he said in software development first we uh, gather the data, de uh, design the software, develop and then uh, 
uh, launch. But uh, Winston Roy said that this model is flawed and this model does not work in many of the cases because it does not involve uh, the scope of iteration. So, this is the typical waterfall model. So, first we uh, talk about the requirement, then we start designing, then imp impl um, implementation uh, happens and then we verify. But after verification, uh, we do not go back to the design and do not uh, change the design or start implementing the, the new concepts, but we just after verification maintenance or the launch of the software happens. So, that is the waterfall traditional waterfall model. But when we talk about the iterative model, uh, the iterative model is like that. So, start, then we find out the requirement, we design, we start implementing and also we test, test with the user and then we take uh, the user's review and the re based on the review, we generate requirement again and we uh, validate the, our design based on our requirement. So, this loop again feeds the requirement ag uh, again and we start evaluating our design and after the uh, design evaluation if the design works properly we then uh, start implementing and then it com uh, it's complete but if we need some uh, tweaking or iterations in the design then we again uh, change the design implement and then test with the user if the review is right we then uh, finish the design and launch the uh, product or website or graphics or whatever we uh, finish the design there. But if it is not again we uh, go in the do loop and that is why w uh, more we uh, circle in the uh, do, uh, this loop uh, the better the product um, uh, usability is. So, facilities of this uh, design is uh, to improve it uh, through feed, uh, feedback of several loops. And uh, the process is done through ethnographic survey and heuristic evaluation. Ethnographic survey is ethno means people and ethnography means the people's behavior in an environment. So, people's behavior in a digital platform is an ethnographic sur uh, survey in terms of uh, uh, new media design. And uh, heuristic evaluation is as we already discussed is heuristic means uh, the people how the people behave with uh, environment. So, in, uh, in this uh, case it is uh, uh, people's behavior with a digital platform is a heuristic evaluation method which uh, designers follow. So, this actually leads to, uh, to the provision of uh, inductive methodology and uh, which is user centering and again based of ethnography and uh, uh, ethnography and um, heuristic evaluation. So, ethnography comes first and the design hypothesis goes uh, comes uh, at the last that is the process of inductive methodology in design. So, we start with the users, uh, we, uh, we go, um, go and find out what the users need is, then we under, try to understand the pattern, what if there is a pattern in the um, users need. So, from that pattern we come to a hypothesis whether uh, this is the particular need of the user and based on that we generate a theory and that is uh, in terms of theoretical research, but in terms of uh, practical projects also we generate uh, a project from an hypothesis which we take from user. But uh, this, this is an inductive uh, design methodology, it, uh, the opposite is deductive design methodology. So, in design uh, deductive design methodology we start with a theory. So, the theory comes first. So, the hypothesis will be uh, we can take any hypothesis uh, and theory which is already proved like Jester's principle or uh, some uh, already proved principle which is uh, which acts uh, um, uh, which acts and people accepted that. So, from theory we take a hypothesis case specific hy hypothesis the con contextual hypothesis we uh, try to mod uh, modulate the hypothesis in terms of uh, particular user context and then we uh, start ob observing them in the uh, how users are behaving uh, with the uh, design and then we uh, confirm the design. So, this is a deductive design methodology which we do not follow, we follow the inductive uh, design methodology in uh, iterative model because in iterative model we start with the user, user's observation. And uh, so, uh, the user observation uh, uh, if we start with a user, uh, user observation and users are actually 
defining our designs, what we uh, deliver in the fi uh, final. So it is also user defined. So this is why the uh, term participatory approach is uh, there. So users are participating, all the stakeholders are participating in the design process. So uh, the term, uh, uh, the sim similar term is also co-design. So users and designers, they collaborate and design together. That is, that is why the term is um, uh, etymologically na named co-design. So this is a model uh, to follow this uh, iterative process and to understand user, to understand, um, uh, to uh, conduct an ethnographic survey. Uh, Donald Norman, uh, the famous uh, designer, he uh, wrote in this, um, in his book, Design for Everyday uh, Thing. This is a conceptual model he have uh, provided. So the system image or the final design should cater to the user's mental model, what users are thinking in terms of what user's perception is on the, um, on the design that has to be catered to and then designer's conceptual ma model should match with the user's model. That is why designers should understand what users are thinking and that they should provide in the system image. And from that also the system image again communicates some information to the user. So there is a visual, a visual communication happening to the users uh, as well and user also understand the uh, uh, re, um, readjust with the mental model. For example, um, if we take uh, Apple I iPod, iPod was uh, first designed by uh, uh, Apple's uh, Steve Jobs, it was not there in the mic uh, market, the concept was absolutely new. So designer um, perceived something and the system was there first and uh, uh, then the user started perceiving what iPod is and uh, then many other company um, uh, launched similar product and because user already created a mental model after seeing what iPod is uh, after uh, iPod la launch in the market. So, uh, so there was a mental model after launching an iPod and other design uh, companies which uh, uh, which uh, apart from Apple uh, have perceived the user's mod model which is there from the system on, uh, image of iPod and then des uh, designers uh, of other firm conceptualized the similar product and designed something. So uh, in these three uh, there is actually a triangle so design, designers and user. So any of these three um, can come first. Uh, the design uh, should be uh, pre preceded by designer's conceptual model, but user's mental model and designer's uh, conceptual mo model in these two, any of these two can come uh, before other. So heuristic evaluation, uh, if we uh, um, discuss it further, it is documenting and analyzing the spontaneous interaction between user and the design. So user, user and in, uh, in, in the environment of design, how they are um, freely interacting that is uh, the process of heuristic evaluation, the um, um, documentation of heuristic ev evaluation. So another model, uh, double uh, this is called double diamond model, this is also proposed by uh, Donald Norman and this is detailed in uh, his uh, the same book, Design for Everyday Thing. But this model is first initially proposed by uh, British Design Council in 2005. So, and uh, Donald Norman uh, um, have um, iterated it and presented it in a uh, different way. So this uh, model actually the diagram uh, looks like two diamonds that is why the na name is double diamond. The first phase, the first diamond is finding the right problem. What he says finding the right problem is actually solves half of the solution. Then finding the right solution becomes much easy if you find the right problem because that is what we under, uh, should understand from ethnographic survey or user study. And then if we find uh, the right problem, we uh, create, uh, we go, go to the next phase which is uh, finding the right solution. So in the finding the right problem, again we have two different stages in finding the right problem and here in this axis, it is uh, time is uh, plotted in x axis in y axis alternative design alternatives or the problems alternatives design um, is um, plotted. So in the first diamond uh, um, we uh, uh, in the problem uh, identification diamond we have first divergence. So the first uh, divergence is called discover we start discovering what, uh, what are the problems we uh, what are the problems us user face what are the different scenarios user um, users go through in the uh, while interacting with a particular website or particular product so we uh, explore each and every possible uh, 
things. So that is why we go divergent. So we think about all different uh, possibilities of problem. But then we converge, we actually define what is the problem. So we eliminate the superficial problems and we start to pinpoint what is the actual and uh, deep rooted problem. So we identify the particular problem here in the first diamond and then we start developing uh, in the next phase which is a solution development phase we start developing the design and when uh, while developing the design again we start thinking about different solutions very different solutions which are possible uh, around that problem we uh, go abroad uh, and think about different alternatives in the sol solution that's why again we, we are going divergent and then we start eliminate, uh, start testing with the user. So while we are testing with the users, many of the solutions uh, might be redundant. Many of the solutions even might not work for the users. So we uh, eliminate many solutions and we find out the best and optimum solution. And that is why, uh, that is how we reach the uh, a particular, the best possible solution in the best, uh, in the particular scenario. So that is uh, how um, Donald Norman is um, describing the double diamond method of design process. So next uh, phase we'll um, start about, uh, we'll, uh, we'll uh, discuss about design thinking how uh, the, uh, the process of design thinking um, uh, happens. Uh, we'll uh, go back to, uh, we'll uh, talk about uh, ethnography and user uh, testing after, uh, user um, study and user testing after, um, to, um, after, after this, but uh, we um, uh, start with the design thinking uh, or the ideation process first. So in the design thinking is a creative thinking process, it's a creative thinking ability to stretch beyond the ordinary or uh, beyond the original um, uh, and, and it has to be original and innovative and flexible to one's thing, uh, uh, flexible um, uh, uh, while designers are um, uh, doing this process. For example, creating a um, mnemonic device which is a um, uh, which is a uh, aid to mem memorize things is one way of thinking creatively. So uh, connecting unrelated things uh, with a single visual is also a process of design thinking. So in uh, the design thinking can be of uh, different uh, ways. It, um, uh, it can be associative, it can be meta uh, metaphorical, it can be elaboration of one particular idea and it can be imaginative and we go into a different dimension in uh, imaginative thinking. So associative thinking is actually recognizing uh, commonalities in different um, different things. So, uh, for uh, for example, uh, we see leaf. Leaf is green, and uh, we um, see uh, color of a logo, which is also green. So we associate uh, a logo which uh, looks like a leaf, and then uh, we uh, start generating a logo which uh, gives a sense of leaf by. Uh, having a similar kind of color or similar kind of uh, shape, but which uh, essentially is not exactly a replica of a leaf. That that is how we associate, and association again uh, can be uh, done in terms of um, elements and principles of design. So elements of designs are again um, color, texture, shape, and all these things. We can borrow texture and uh, color from different uh, elements, and we can associate them. And uh, principle of, of design like unity rhythm, we can associate uh, different elements like um, if uh, they are composed in a rhythmic fashion, if they are also un united in a composition. Then it can be met metaphorical thinking, metaphorical thinking like if we uh, start thinking, um, 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 decipher a particular object metaphorically. For example, if we um, uh, think about a term uh, sand, if we uh, want to design some um, graphics which evokes the sensation of sand. Uh, the, we can think about the attributes of sand. Uh, it can uh, it can be uh, dry, uh, it's grainy, it's uh, yellow. So we start metaphorically from sand, and we can go into dry, yellow, grainy, and all these kind of different adjectives. And uh, elaborative or uh, and modification. Uh, this is another uh, way of thinking. So we start elaborating a particular object. Uh, suppose we uh, start uh, any. Um, uh, object which is designed by man, uh, for example, a building, which can we uh, we start elaborating each and every um, function, each and every elements of a house or building. Like for example, window, door, brick. We start from a brick and we again elaborate. We start from each and every element like door, fenestration, 
um, space and we again start elaborating. From space again we can connect with the uh, space of um, uh, uh, extraterrestrial space and again we uh, can go um, imaginative from that. So, design th uh, thinking is actually a process of taking one thing and going um, thinking about all uh, the associated uh, uh, adjectives and uh, pro uh, products associated to that. So, this is actually uh, caters to the um, helps in the double diamond metho methods design solution finding. When we have to find out lot of uh, different alternatives, lot of different solutions, lot of different uh, variants for uh, coming up uh, to uh, multivariate design solutions, then we uh, this process of design imaginative uh, elaborative design thinking helps. It can also imaginative we can jump from one um, thing to absolutely a different uh, thing very intuitively. So, the tools of design thinking we will discuss. Uh, so, the one tool is brainstorming this is a very popular tool and uh, where um, this is first um, described by uh, Alex um, Osborne. So, in uh, the brainstorming session what happens is uh, all the designers sit together and start discussing about a, a particular design process. And uh, in the brainstorming process we start with one particular thing and uh, each and every uh, people participates. So, this is a group um, uh, 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 design thinking process, there are also individual design thinking process. So, in uh, brainstorming uh, it is essentially a group uh, uh, design thinking process. So, one person takes from the other um, person's uh, design um, uh, initiation and thinks uh, adds his own uh, imagination. So, brainstorming as uh, described by Richard Serra, he is a famous uh, installation uh, designer. While he was uh, discussing about a particular sculpture, he was, uh, uh, he was saying that why uh, we should uh, think about the how to uh, manifest, how to uh, design the sculpture, why not to uh, think uh, in terms of verbs and adjectives about the materials and the sensation of the structure. For example, this uh, here uh, we have the photograph of uh, installation of time and space. Uh, which is there inside uh, Guggenheim uh, Museum Bilbao, which is designed by um, Frank Gehry. So, this uh, installation is, um, is talking about space. So, he, uh, here in this installation, uh, if we see this installation, uh, in one installation, the, uh, uh, the space within that, the cross section is fixed. In one installation, the base of this uh, path is fixed. In one installation, the top part of the uh, part is fixed. So, what he is um, uh, talking uh, about here, here is the perception of people inside a in, um, in, in, inside a, a moving uh, inside a movement space. So, when uh, people enters and uh, perceive the space, uh, he uh, understands the relationship between the space and time frame. So, there is a co correlation here uh, wants to talk about the correlation be between the space and time through, uh, through this. Um, installation. While designing this, so he actually thought about not thought about the material and how to construct this, but he thought about a particular concept of space time correlation. So, the thumbs, uh, thumb rules from uh, brainstorming is include every possible uh, adjective, every possible uh, products which comes around this and never judge an idea because we will judge the idea after uh, when we uh, uh, discuss uh, with the users and uh, take users feedback then we start uh, evaluating each and every alternative and users feedback can uh, give a, a different uh, dimension in the um, possible alternatives. Another process of uh, design thinking is mind mapping. Unlike uh, brainstorming mind uh, mapping is actually a uh, individual process while uh, one designer starts doing the visual thinking. So, mind mapping is a process where uh, it can start from a word, it can uh, start from a, uh, a particular image. For example, um, uh, for logo design, uh, a client might uh, need to uh, for, for a, uh, uh, in case of a coffee shop, client might uh, need to uh, have a logo which evokes a sen uh, sensation of a uh, coffee. So, uh, in mind mapping the central word will be coffee. From coffee people can go ab um, um, around it can uh, it, uh, 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 designer can think about the color of a coffee and um, think about the colors, color scheme 
and also it can uh, designer can think about the um, liquidity of the coffee and uh, think in a different dimension and also you can um, uh, designers can think about the experience of having a coffee and the logo can evolve from that as well. So, uh, mind mapping can also be it is automatic mind, uh, mind mapping. So, uh, we start with any word and we uh, just go imaginative and start writing what uh, comes uh, into our mind and uh, absolutely not influenced by any things. But deliberate mind mapping can be we uh, some uh, we start thinking and deliberately we again come back and branch out from the same. For example, we uh, take the same example of coffee. So, automating in of automatic mind mapping it will be if we uh, take the color of coffee, we start from the color and we go into the direction of color itself. We do not come back to the liquidity or the experience of having coffee. And in deliberate mind mapping, we go into the di direction of color and then again we come back to the again uh, the base uh, word which is coffee and then again we uh, start thinking about the liquidity of the coffee and uh, 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 and go uh, go imaginative again we come back to the coffee and we can also uh, think about the experience of having coffee and then again uh, we start uh, mind mapping so this is actually a process so in a uh, automatic mind mapping we start from one and we just branch out and go and we don't come back to the world so this yellow part is actually what automatic mind mapping but in deliberate mind mapping we start branch out from one side and then again we come back then we start branching out from uh, this main word again. So, that is a process of deliberate mind ma ma mapping where this word gives a higher uh, emphasis in the uh, mind mapping. So, after this so uh, what we get from mind mapping is is number of different uh, words and uh, different adjectives that actually helps us to ideate uh, to create alternative design solutions. For example, we can have uh, different color schemes, different objects, different um, elements. Uh, for example, pictures and from the this uh, thing pictures and words, it comes to comic, it also com comes to infographics um, and many other things. It can in some uh, path uh, it follows and it goes to Mars again. So, uh, there are a lot of different, uh, it again goes to collage and many other uh, so what we get as a our inspiration board is lot of different uh, um, assortments of words different adjectives which actually helps us to uh, ideate different de design concepts so in the next class we'll discuss about uh, the phases of uh, visual design process uh, which are uh, orientation analysis concept design and implement uh, implementation so uh, where we will apply mind mapping, brainstorming as a design thinking process. Thank you.